cervical radiculopathy. Cervical radiculopathy is caused by cervical nerve root compression. The patient will have pain and or progressive neurological deficit that result from conditions such as disc herniation that irritate a nerve in the cervical spine. So cervical radiculopathy is an irritation of the cervical nerve root. We know that the cervical spine and shoulder problems overlap. You know that the condition is of cervical etiology if relief of the pain occurs with shoulder abduction by placing the hand over the head. The relief of the symptoms occurs due to decreased tension on the nerve roots. Be aware of the false positive MRIs, especially if the patient is above the age of 40. Nerve conduction studies are not useful. It has a high false negative rate. EMG and nerve studies may differentiate radiculopathy from peripheral nerve entrapment. The cervical disc problems usually affect the lower numbered nerve root, such as C6, C7 herniation will affect C7 nerve root. When you see the middle finger numbness, then it is C7. Just remember, C7 is the middle finger. If you see the middle finger in a test exam, it is C7. Go one way on the fingers will be C6. Go the other way will be C8. The middle finger is C7. If you have C7 nerve root, you will get the middle finger numbness. You will get the triceps weakness and triceps reflex will be affected. It is an easy way to remember the dermatomes and the muscle function. But let's understand the arrangement of these nerve roots. You got seven vertebrae, but eight nerve roots. So what happened? The cervical nerve root is horizontal in orientation. So it doesn't matter if the disc is central or the disc is foraminal, it will get the same nerve root. For example, if this is at the level of C6, C7, it's going to get C7 nerve root. And this nerve root runs above the pedicle. So C7 nerve root runs above C7 pedicle. C come to C8 nerve root, and this one runs above T1 pedicle, and then T1 nerve root runs below T1 pedicle. So let's start with C7. C7, you'll have the wrist flexion. It looks like C7, and you can see that the wrist is flexed and the finger is extended. It is the shape of 7 that will help you to remember that. If the wrist flexion is C7, then the wrist extension is C6. C5, C6 is the most commonly affected disc, and that will compress C6 nerve root. Finger flexion is C8. Abduction is T1. The interosseae is T1. You can add shoulder abduction C5. And elbow flexion will be C6. Elbow extension will be C7. And triceps reflex is C7. You can see the dermatomes here, C6 is present at the letter 6, C7 at the middle finger, and the fifth finger will be C8. 
So the patient will come to you with unilateral arm pain relieved by arm elevation. And the numbness and the paresthesia will be in specific dermatomes. Patient may also have an upper trapezius pain or interescapular pain. The patient may complain of occipital headache. When you examine the patient, you will do the provocative test such as the spilling and the shoulder abduction test. The spelling test is done by extending and rotating the neck towards the involved side. It reproduces the symptoms by narrowing the neuroforamen. The spelling test differentiates cervical radiculopathy from peripheral nerve entrapment. Shoulder abduction test, lifting the arm above the head, relieves the symptoms. It differentiates cervical pathology from other causes of painful shoulder etiology. Make sure you don't have a double crush syndrome, one in the neck and one in the peripheral nerve. Make sure you differentiate radiculopathy from myelopathy. Make sure you exclude a coexisting myelopathy. So examine the patient for upper motor neuron signs or cervical myelopathy. Test the patient for gait instability. This is the Hoffman sign. The Papineski. And the Clonus. And check if you have hyperreflexia. Treatment. Even if they show you a bad cervical spine disc on an MRI, you will treat it conservatively for about three months. You give the patient therapy and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. 75% of the patient will improve with non-operative treatment. Cervical radiculopathy is generally treated non-operatively, in contrast to cervical myelopathy. When do you do the surgery? You do the surgery when there is a persistent severe pain for 6 to 12 weeks and or progressive neurological deficit, such as weakness or numbness. The procedure to treat cervical radiculopathy is usually done anteriorly with direct removal of the lesion that causes the radiculopathy, such as herniated disc or spurs. When you place the anterior bone graft or datograft in the disc space, you open the neuroforamen and that will indirectly relieve the nerve. Then you add the anterior plate. Some surgeons prefer posterior approach.